in the city, in the city where the land is the land. The last verse, then let sunlight fade. Then let sunlight fade, then light bring this gloom. Not a shadow can my blissful soul afford. Sing one more time in the city. In the city where the land is alive. city where the lamb is the light. The Bible says in that scripture, there shall be no temple there for the lamb. Amen. Amen. Is that temple. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. See the city needs no need for light. Let's be seated. God bless you. Shall we just read that in Revelation chapter 21? Sometimes it's good to refresh our memories. Amen. A little fun. To stay in touch with these things. Amen. Revelation 22, 21 verse 22. Revelation 21 verse 22. Yes. And I saw no temple therein. And I for saw no temple therein. 
For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Yes. And the city had no need of the sun. The city had no need of the sun. Neither of the moon. Oh, yes. To shine in it. Yes. For the glory of God did lighten it. Mm. And the Lamb is the light thereof. Amen. It's okay. Keep that at heart. Amen. There will be no external illumination. It will be the spirit and the word. That is the illumination that will lighten up the city. Glory be to God. The Lord bless us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads. I want us to talk to the Lord. It's a few minutes. Let's give thanks to the Lord for this opportunity we have to study, to come in the presence of God, to examine the Word. There's what we call responsibility. responsibility the, the ability to stand at the post of duty Responsibility. Lord, don't let my honor be given to others. Don't let my, my case be like that of Esau. Many of us, we cover ourselves with, ah, it is written. That's how it's supposed to be. Why is it not written the other way? Why wasn't it written the other way? Why is it always written to your failure? Why is it always written to your damnation? Wake up from your sleep. Ask the Lord. Awaken me. Awaken me. Wicked me in the name of Jesus Christ. God will make a way where there seemed to be no way. He walks in ways we cannot see.
will make a way where there seems to be no way. You are back in. Be back. Be, amen. With love and strength each new day Reduce your drum. He will make a way. He will make a way. I want us to pray for the family of the late brother Moore. I spoke with the family today and in a very sad tune the daughter said pastor there is no man in our house again and that caught me deep said there is no man in our house Let's talk to the Lord. Comfort that family. Visit them. Send help from the sanctuary. Cast light into their dark corners. Oh. It's so sad. But God knows he who allows oh thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus Let victory speak through them. Let the Holy Ghost, that is the Comforter, at this time show forth himself to them, manifest himself to them. Let Mama Moore not be moved. Let her fulfill her days. She has refused to speak. Lord, Encourage her in the Lord. Show her, Lord, that there are better days ahead. There are gloomy days like this. But it's not the end. That's not how the story ends. Thank you, Father. Say, God, we are going to make a way. Just be still. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 
He says, Be still, the Lord is going to make a way for the last time. Song we say, yes, Song be still. Stand at your position. The helper is available. He's been there before the trouble. To the more family, the Lord uphold you. The Lord keep you. The Lord strengthen you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's give thanks for answering prayers. Shall we stand to our feet? Give God thanks. Is a prayer answering God. Make a way. Oh Lord. Thank you Father. Yes Lord Jesus. Yes. Thank the Lord. Thank you Father. Thank you King of Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you Father Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. It is for your sake that we are not consumed. We receive, Lord, this hour with joy. As we open the word, go ahead of us. Break this revelation. Help us to eat right. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Praise the Lord. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I begin to read from verse 1. For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. For I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal had provoked very many. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that as I said, ye may be ready. Lest haply, if they of Macedonia with me are and find you unprepared we that we say not ye should be ashamed in this same confident boasting. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they will go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of covetousness. But I say, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap spar also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully 
shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, but or for the for God loveth a cheerful giver. Let me read that verse again. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye always have all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he had dispersed abroad, he had given to the poor, his righteousness remained forever. Now he that ministered seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruit of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. For the administration of this service not only supplied the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgiving unto God. Verse 13. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men and by their prayer for you which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift may the Lord bless the reading of his word we be seated in Jesus name Let's be seated. From Moses, you read for me. Before we go into the word today, let me exhort us about order. Amen. Praise the Lord. When we come into the house of the Lord to fellowship, Every other thing is secondary. Amen? Every other thing is secondary. That's why you see ushers. You cannot stand up and move at will. No. No. It is not right. So if you need to make a movement, you lift up your hand. Even if nobody attends to you, you first of all raise your hand to show that you want to make a movement. If there is an ocean near you, he will come and attend to you. He can talk to you. A deacon can talk to you. You might need water. You may not need to move. What you need, he might be handy with him. It may be handy with him. He will give it to you. You might need a pen. So when you are coming to the house of the Lord, Prepare the things you know that you will be in need of. Including your offerings. Once they say it is offering time and you see people start going up and down. That's why in some assemblies you see that the offering boxes are outside. You just come and ramble there, you finish. You come in here. This is to give heed to the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The musicians, I don't know what, how you are, because I see that you people have a lot of meetings and practice and stuff. The drum should not be higher. Play that drum calmly. We are not in a concert. And it's not even all concerts that are noisy. Even in the world, there are people they call rock and roll. They are crazy people. 
You don't bring that to the church of Jesus Christ. There's what we, you, when you, you, those of us who are, there's what we call the lead singer amongst you, there will be lead singers, there will be backup. The backup don't tune the song. When a song, the song leader stands here and the hymn is given, except he gives a sign that maybe he has forgotten the hymn, allow him to sing the first line. He might change the song, correct? Somebody wanted to sing, uh, Oh Lord my God, when thou art in uh, what? Awesome wonder. And once you mentioned the hymn, everybody opened it. We got ready to sing with her. It was a special number, and she changed the tune. Praise the Lord. That is order. Amen. At any given time, the person singing can say, okay, you join me. God is not the author of confusion. We are not a denomination, so we should not, we should not behave like them. Amen. Our mouth is sharp against denomination, so we must be careful so that we don't carry their clothes and begin to wear. Praise the Lord. We do things orderly. Amen. Even the more that I'm complaining, hallelujah, you heard what the preacher said on Sunday. Amen. We, me, I'm complaining, but he's saying, oh, this is so lovely. But it is not lovely to me. I know I'm not God, but I'm the servant of God here. Amen. We need to conduct. Look at what, the, what it says in First Timothy chapter 3. Let me get there. First Timothy chapter 3, where he said, How to behave yourself. Second, first Timothy, rather, not second. Amen. First. 14. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. First Please. Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. Yes. These things write I unto thee, mm -hmm. hoping to come unto thee shortly. Okay. But if I tarry long, if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. That you should know how you should behave yourselves in now, the house of in God. In the house of God. So now you say, ah, Bro, Pastor, what have we done wrong? You've not done anything wrong. I'm just reminding you that you should behave yourselves. Amen. Amen. God, he, he takes everything seriously. He doesn't joke. We know we have a lot of dust. Even this place has been clean. Once the service is about to start again, Somebody should be in charge, clean them, or you put some clothings on them. All these things we are seeing is out of order. Put some clothes on them. Out of order. As if we want to fight. Amen. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm taking this statement from the prophet messenger of this age. Amen. Amen. He made the statement, God's eternal tight. God's eternal tight. So the subject tonight is God's eternal tight. Amen. Amen. So let's go back to our text in first, is it first or second? Second Corinthians chapter 9. Start the reading from verse.
verse number five. You are terminating at verse number seven. Second Corinthians chapter nine from verse five. Yes, sir. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren. Yes, sir. That they would go before unto you mm -hmm. and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye have noticed before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of conversiousness. Okay. But so, the while that is going on, I want someone to get another translation. So, read verse 6. Verse 6 again. But this I say, yes. he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Yes. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Yes. Verse 7. Every man according as he proposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Okay, would you read verse 6 and 7, verse Verse 5 and 6 in, okay, verse 5 to 7 again from another translation. Maybe if you have the NLT, the NLT or the ESV, which one of them might interest us more to read. I will read. NLT. NLT. Is that NLT? Okay, please read so that we can cover up. We are behind time. So I thought I should send these brothers ahead of me yes. to make sure the gift you promised is ready. Okay. But I want it to be willing gift, not mm. one giving grudgingly. Mm. Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. Mm. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Mm. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. Mm. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Amen. Amen. Saints of God, maybe some of us will be surprised that we are taking this subject. We hardly talk about this. But there are certain things that prayer won't do. Amen. Amen. I want you to pay close attention. Now, let's quote like this together. Let's recite. He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. But do you know something? Somebody must sow. Without sowing, there is no eating. Now, he's not talking about giving yet. He's illustrating the condition of every man who puts a seed in the ground. As a farmer, so they say that one farmer is doing better than the other farmer. It is by numbers. They may have the same plot of land. Amen. But go and look at the spacing. Praise the Lord. In between the crops. Go and look at the number of lines that one has made as against the other. Praise the Lord. Whether he sows sparingly 
or whether he sows bountifully, they both sowed. Amen. Amen. And they both will receive. There is just no arrangement for anybody who sows nothing. God, amen, amen, loves the poor but hates poverty because he's demonic. Amen. Now, what does God do for the poor? He raises the poor out of the pit, the pit of poverty. Amen. That you are not doing anything is worse than the money you don't have. It's better you do something you don't have. It, you'll be paid somewhere because each time you sweat, there is a reward. It might not be immediately, but God had spoken. Amen. Amen. At the sweat of thy brow shall thou eat bread. But what if you are sitting down sweating? You sweat doing nothing. Even your muscles, they die off because of lack of usage. Amen. Amen. Even your strength, they die off for lack of usage. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I had a friend. Yes. I say he was a friend. You know, some people are very secretive. He built a mansion. He lived overseas, came back, built a mansion. But every time he and the wife would be quarreling, and the wife, each time she's calling, she said, the children are growing. The children are growing. And this man gets busy that he's doing a lot of business. I just knew him through another pastor. And the pastor took me and we went to visit him. Listen carefully. But this pastor will never want to offend him. By telling him the truth. So one day, I, I was invited by, that, by the pastor to meet him there. And I went. I parked outside as I get inside the house. I heard they were quarreling. And the woman came out straight and asked me, Sir, this is the reason why we are quarreling. What do you think about this? And I rebuked the man. When I rebuked him, he and the pastor, they were shocked. That does, does this man not see this house that is rebuking me? <laughs> I had a car that when you push it, if you don't push it, it doesn't start. And he said, he can start it before getting inside. Praise the Lord. But let me tell you something to give you where I'm going, where I'm pressing. The wife... Every wife knows their husband. Do you know like that? Yes. So the wife got to know that he's involved in, a, in drug business. Listen. So the daughter came back one day from school and asked the brother, why is my father always at home and he's making money? Where is his office? But he's satisfying the children. Are you listening to me? He's making that girl happy. But the girl is worried because the other person's father is a doctor. 
The other person's father is a lawyer. The other person's father is a, a truck pusher. The other person's father sells gala. The other person's father does something. When they come to school, her father gives more. But somebody challenged, where is your father's office? Is it in Lagos Island? So she cried home. Mommy, why is my daddy always sitting down at home reading newspaper? Where is his office? My brother, all of those things, they will come down. That marriage shattered. He ran back to Europe. Everything scattered. Don't be a wife whose husband is bringing things, your husband is bringing things home and you don't ask. Ask. You have right because you will suffer if anything goes wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. Alright. So let's approach this subject. God granting us grace. Now look at it. Paul is already saying here he did not divide the group into three. Those who sowed sparingly, those who sowed bountifully, and those who did not sow. He had no business with those who never sowed. Amen. Amen. He had no what? Business with those who had nothing to sow. He had no business with them. But he was trying to admonish those who so sparingly to let them know that I am not forcing you, but you cannot be more than what you sow. It is when the denomination stop, stop talking that we start talking. Because it's that that makes sense with God. Amen. You, the farmer. Amen? Your strength is in your numerics. How much crops you have tells how much power you can control. So he that so sparingly, he doesn't want to take risk. He doesn't want to be offended. He wants to be the ordinary. So he buys a few seed of beans, a few seed of maize, because he doesn't want to be hungry in the morning. He doesn't want to be hungry in the afternoon. He doesn't want to sacrifice one day. Amen. Every day of the week, a man must eat. And there's no one day that he wants to sacrifice without instruction from the church that he should take a fast. No! He does not play with his belly. Poverty awaits. He's jumping in the arms of poverty. And that kind of poverty is not the poverty, you know. Don't deceive yourself. Amen. Listen. Your struggle will contribute right now to your children that are coming. Even if they are, your wife is going to give birth to the, another one, that your struggle will do something for that yet unborn child. But when you don't lay anything down, you are, you are surmounting poverty, you are, you are you're already passing poverty as an inheritance while you are living. Because your belly has, not, has blinded you.
Amen. Every man. When Paul says verse 7, let's read verse 7 for me, please. Every man. Verse 7. Second Corinthians 9, verse 7. Yes. Every man according as he proposeth in his heart, so let him give. Wait. Every man is not some men. Every man spare no one. In the church and in the kingdom of God, there is nobody that does not have. But there are people who don't want to have. They plan not to have. You don't have today does not mean that you don't have. You don't have today, but you have. And you are going to have. But there are people that will not have next year. Not because God is, has destined them not to have but because they have prepared themselves not to have. Every man. We are not teaching this to raise funds. Of course you know. Amen. Amen. How many of you saw the report today? The report, the title of the report. You see, you didn't, read, you didn't not open your internet. Have you not posted it, brother? Yeah, the, uh, people are talking about it from outside. The report says, what's the title? It says, an ark on a dry land. That is faith. It says, your faith can move mountains. We went to a remote place to preach the gospel. The people in that town... If you bring them together, they are not up to 300. Correct? In Bang. Are they up to 300? The people in that town. But we build a, 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 a tabernacle of a capacity of 500. So they are in problem because they need to go and borrow people and come and complete it. They say, oh, they don't want us to preach. That's not a problem. We're going to be having conventions there. Yeah, starting from 2024, 2025 rather. Amen. Amen. We're going to be having meetings there. There's no problem. Now people are passing. They are stopping. They are asking. What is happening here? Oh, I'm an end time message believer. We never knew. And he has been passing there. But we had to stop because he saw a building. There's no signpost yet. Nothing. The farmer souls with hope. But at the hour of sowing, he cries. Because that's yam head. Ten of it could feed his family. But he put it in the ground. And tell them, let us go and wait. Let us go and wait. Let us go and wait. You know that the farmer, when he puts that farm's, that yam head in the ground, the yam leaves begin to come out. The farmer start to be, be filled. You know hope fills somebody up. Hallelujah! The farmer begins to do what? To be filled. Not because he has seen what is inside, but he just saw what is outside. And he begins to have hope. His mind begins to be belly full. Yeah. Hallelujah. He will never let me down. He will never let me down. When I put my trust in him, he will never let me down. Hallelujah. He will never let me down. My God will never Oh, yes. He will never let me down. My God will never. 
lets me down when I put my trust in him he will never let me down hallelujah Psalm 26 from verse 1 to the end. Let's read six verses. Let's be fast about that. Psalm 126. 1 to 6. From verse 1 to, to the six. end. Yes. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. Yes. We were like them that dream dreams. Now, what is the captivity of Zion in what we are talking about? The farmer goes at the time of harvest. Up here, the cassava just looked like, you know, every other cassava. There was a day I went with my wife to harvest cassava. I don't know how many of you saw the photograph, the photo of those that harvest. So, we put our hands in the ground there. We shake it. Huh? Then we start to pull. You know how you harvest cassava. You don't want it to break off, yeah? So we shake, 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 shake. Then you start to pull. Pull and we're pulling. Shake and pull. It was still going inside. Shake and pull. Until the cassava was coming to my chest. Shake and pull. I still have that photograph. Brother, the cassava was like this. One cassava. We're like them that dream dreams. And do you know when this cassava was planted? It was planted during the coronavirus time. There was no food. And my wife insisted that she must plant. I was just looking at her. And she started planting. Cut the stem put, cut the stem put, cut the stem put. The land was not even hers. She just begged for the land and they gave it to her and then she started planting. Amen. Amen. Pastor James Vodavandi, who will be with us in the next two weeks, he said something on this pulpit. He said, Son, he said sons of God, don't make it. They don't, we don't make it. We are in it. He said, we are in it gradually.
We are in it gradually. Because I, praise the Lord's church. I just woke up this morning and I found 10 billion in my account. Hallelujah. <laughs> but don't you hear such testimonies all these places? It's those government money they were stealing, putting in those churches. They are, they are, they are, they are favored that I'm not an EFCC officer. I know those I'll be running after. Verse 2, brother. Yes. Psalm 126, verse 2. Yes, sir. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. Our mouth was filled with laughter. And our tongue with singing. Yes, sir. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things mm. for them. Mm. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. The heathen testified before they began to testify. Because blessings does not hide. A woman is trusting the Lord from the foot of the womb and then you start seeing her belly swell. There will be two types of testimonies from the hidden. They say, ah, he's fake. No, she's sick. But those who are seed of God waiting outside, still waiting to come in, will say, that is the blessing of the Lord. God have answered that. May, may it be unto me as it is to her. Next verse, verse 4. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, mm. as the streams in the south. Yes, sir. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Listen to me. Do you know how we preach as we sow? Don't say, ah, uh, our pastor, is, he has revelation. It's just God giving him. If you don't read this Bible, you will not have us anything. If you don't read it, you will not have us anything. Now, if you don't read it with an open heart, you will not have us anything. You know how some preachers, they harvest, they take yam from their house and go to the farm five years ago where they harvested it and put it back and remove it and take it back home. Nonsense. On Aburi Accord, I stand. This is what, how we have been knowing it. No new light. Nothing. As the light shines, you are moving. You are, the, the event, the environment is changing. If you are driving a car, amen, and you are accelerating, would you be seeing that bridge you saw behind you? Will you see it in front? You see different things, different view. But on the same lane. Hallelujah! Amen. Next verse. Verse 6. He that goeth forth and weepeth, oh. bringing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Let me tell you something. When it comes to the blessing of God, there is no accidental blessing. Carefully plan everything for your tomorrow because Abraham was God's prophet amen that did not stop a man called Lazarus to be God's prophet also that is true it's a matter of choice when we married People brought us gifts. Fill the house with gifts. Then we came up. 
the first Saturday as we came to Lagos. And I told my wife, we will dedicate part of these things to the Lord. Go and bring what you want to give to the Lord. She went and brought the first set. I said, go and bring again. She brought another one. I said, go and bring the one, one of the ones that we pay in you. She went and brought. And I checked it. I know that this thing is very precious. We got a taxi. We had no car then. Put it in. We drove. Didn't even know where we were going to. It was only on a Sunday. Because somewhere they were having fellowship. Amen. And the minister was ministering there. We got there, we parked. We asked the taxi to wait. We sat down behind. They finished. We removed those things. And gave. We gave. We started packing things. Both the boot and the back of the seat. We are only squeezed. While my wife sat in front. We packed those things. Hip. We went away. A person who meets me and don't give me has missed road. Mm -mm. I tell you, in the name of the Lord, you mean God didn't minister to you. If you are a person that God ministers to, you can't see this ministry and not support it. You can't overlook it. I'm not talking about I'm talking about even pastors who are already established. A few days ago, do you know the pastor of a church called One Insight? Insight Bible Church. It's a very popular church. The pastor called me. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I want to say something. You, you cannot ignore it. Because there is a place where God puts his name. And that place is in his word. And a man who carries it. You cannot overlook it. We are not wanting to raise buildings and look gorgeous. No. It is for the ministry that no missionary out there should suffer. There is a man who can understand that. There are pastors in who are pastors of three persons. Not because they are not praying. Not because they are not studying. Not because they are not fasting. Not because they are not evangelizing. But that is what God has given them. And God has raised other pastors like us to support them. To make sure that they will not leave their place of duty. And say no, let me leave the village and go to the city. When the Lord turn again our captivity, we're like we as them that dream dreams. We're surprised. What great thing the Lord has done. So there is no space for the man who is not willing to sow anything. There is no space for a man who is not willing to do anything. For a sister who says, I'm a complete housewife, I will not do anything. I will just fold my hands and sit down there. You are going to run your husband dead. In a period like this. Even without this period. It's not even now you should now start walking. You're supposed to have started since. So that this time will be easy. We were told by prophecy. Correct? Amen. 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 Where is my daddy's office?
Glory be to God. All right. So let's look at something. If Paul in verse 7 says, would you read for me? Every man. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7. Yes. Every man according as he proposed in his heart. Yes. So let him give. So every man should propose in his heart to give. Not grudgingly. But not grudgingly. Or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. I don't understand Paul. If not grudgingly, why are you sending people to go and collect the gift? What if it's not time that they are ready? But Jesus said to his two disciples, as you go, you will find an ass tied to a colt. Untie it. If any man asks you, say like this, the master have need of it. Amen. The master have need of it. Say like this. The master has need of it. What do you have that the master have need of? Amen. Amen. What do you have that the master have need of? Some of us have eyes that the master have need of. They just come to church on Sunday and they will stand up. When people are passing by, they look at them. By looking at them, they know the size of their shoe. By looking at the sister, they know the size of their clothing. They will go, they will make something nice, simple, but beautiful. And they will come and keep it somewhere. They will even point to the usher and say, you see that person? Please, see the sister? Make sure you give this clothes to her. Don't talk about who gave it. Listen to me. In 2011, I was in Singapore. And the place I stayed with an elderly brother, he's still alive today, lovely brother, Brother Kati, used to be a police chief. I think Brother Kati should be 84, 85, or more now, maybe 87, I don't know. Very strong brother. Hallelujah. He used to skip me in his house each time, the first and second time I went there early, before these days. So an Indian sister came and I asked her, I didn't see you in church. She said, oh, the church people don't have love. I said, what? The whole church? Don't expect the whole church to understand, to do the same thing. They are not the same. But if one person does it, it is the church that did it. Hallelujah! The problem is when there is nobody who will do it. Then it now confirms that that church has a problem. So this sister began to complain. She began to complain. And then she said, but there is something that used to happen. Each time I go there, somebody used to, they used to send money to me. Somebody used to send money in my account and send this thing. And I think it's from that church. But I, I don't know the person. Then I say, okay, but from the church. You know, as God will do it. As God will have it. Amen. Amen. When I finished talking with her, I encouraged her and prayed with her. I told her to come to church the next week. Then, when I went to the church, the next Sunday, I looked at the congregation and said, Lord, who do I speak to? Who do I speak to? Constantly? Lead me. Let me speak to somebody. Then I saw a particular sister. She's the wife of one of the elders today now. The senior elder. I said, come, sister. Let me talk with you. I said, we started discussing some things. Then I said to her sister, there is a woman in this church and a sister in this church. 
And that sister had really complained to me bitterly that she is not finding love, that nobody cares for her. But she says that somebody somewhere randomly used to put up something somewhere for her. She said, I am the one. I take it as a duty because I know that I can see that she is lonely. I take it as a duty to support her. And do you see how God connected the two? He took me from this problem to the solution. And I said, the Lord bless you. Keep it up. Then I went back to that sister and said, I think you are ungrateful. Because there are so many ungrateful people. Those ungrateful people can never give themselves. They are only there. Somebody told Pastor Billy Joseph, he said, God has known that you'll be the one feeding me. Nonsense. Amen. Praise the Lord. Complainers will never have. Because complaint is a price not to have. You pay the price to buy emptiness. May God deliver me from that. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know, I don't know about you. Look at what the Bible says. At the dedication of a child in the Old Testament, if it was a male child or it was a female child, he said they should bring this. If you don't have this, he came down, bring this. If you don't have this, you bring this. Then the cheapest thing was a turtle dove. The cheapest thing that is cheaper than bread. Say, bring two turtle dove. Praise the Lord. The cheapest thing was a turtle dove. I was telling a man today on phone, you were hearing me, I said to him, you boast about your work. I want you to just boast about your breath. Boast about your arm. A friend of mine sent me an accident today that happened at somewhere at Kogi. Somewhere in Kogi. Oh my God. This woman is holding her baby. She is bleeding. The baby is almost dying in her hand. The husband is lying down. Blood is coming out. If she wants to stand up, blood is coming out. The woman is looking at the husband. She just, oh, she, that is, you see her that, oh. And she's looking at other two children. There are people around you that have experienced things. We had Bradishna here. How many of you know Bradishna? We stand in the US. One day, he, too, drew. he was going to his state, his wife and himself, and three children. The wife died just after, as they got out of Lagos. They've not just before Shagamu. There was an accident. The wife died there with a little baby, living with that too. Many years later, we knew him. He came to this church, maybe about f after five years of that accident. And then some brothers began to complain to us. They said, look, traditional, he has a house, but he doesn't sleep in his house. He sleeps inside his car. And then one day I called him, we squeezed ourselves, we were just there. I was lying down somewhere, I said, brother, talk to me, brother, this man. And he began to tell me the accident. I refused to ask him anything further. My brothers, humble yourselves. 
Humble yourselves. God wants to make you players in the kingdom. Humble yourselves. Don't go where God has not sent you to go. Don't carry what God has not asked you to carry. Praise the Lord. So he says there, not of necessity. I want to hear that. Second Corinthians chapter 7, 9 verse, 9 verse 7. 7. Every man according as he proposed in his heart. Every man must propose in his heart. So let him give. Let him give. Not grudgingly. Not grudgingly. Or of necessity. Oh, 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 oh. Not of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Now, this is where afternoon interpreters of gospel now say, oh, that tight is necessity. <laughs> Amen. That brings me back. So we have landed where we want to go. Let's cut again. Amen. Let me just help you, my brothers and sisters. Show me one person who doesn't tithe that is conscious of God and giving. So let me help you. This is to life for life assurance. Somebody confess. Please hear me and hear well. Give me Genesis chapter eighteen. Genesis Last week, chapter Wednesday, 18. I was talking about ten. Correct. We are going back to ten again. Why ten? Genesis chapter eighteen. I want you to start reading from verse 21. Genesis 18 verse 21. Yes. I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it which is come unto me. That's Jehovah speaking. Yes. And if not, I will know. Yes, sir. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Abraham drew, what, drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Paraventure, there be fifty righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? Stop. Abraham told God, I know you are a righteous God and men sacrifice to stay righteous by believing you. Would you destroy the wicked? Do you destroy the righteous along the wicked? If there are 50 righteous people, would you destroy? 50 is jubilee. 50 is what? Jubilee. 50 is freedom. 50 is Pentecost. So Abraham was saying, would you destroy those that have the Holy Ghost? Because they are Nigerians. Because of the trouble of Nigeria. Because they are Americans, but they have the Holy Ghost. He said, no, I won't do that. Watch and open your ears. The subject is God's eternal tithe. Listen to me. You can read the letters, but you need the spirit to help you. Read on my brother. Verse 25, yes, Genesis sir. 18. Yes. That be far from thee to do after this <laughs> manner, <laughs> to slay the righteous with the wicked, mm. and that the righteous should be as the wicked. Mm. That be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Shall not the judge, the blesser of the earth, because to judge is to bless, do right? Keep reading. That be far from thee. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said. And the Lord said, 
if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, oh. then I will spare all the place for their okay. sakes. Oh. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust, dust. and ashes. And ashes. Paraventure. Paraventure. There shall lack five of the 50 righteous. If there are five of the 50 missing righteous. Missing from the 50. That would be how many? 45. 45. Will thou destroy all the city for the lack of five? And he said, if I find there 40 and 5, oh, yes. I will not destroy it. What is Abraham saying and here? And he spake. Wait, wait, brother. What's Abraham saying in 45? What does 45 mean? Now, 50 is supposed to be Pentecost. Supposed to be Holy Ghost. The experience. But now, after you receive it, because of turmoil, because of struggle, because of business, business is busy. Busy here and there. The Holy Ghost power drop somehow in our lives. Will God still destroy? No. You have it. You have it. Because you know if you fall, you will rise again. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep going, my brother. Verse Let's 29. Go. Yes. And he speak unto him again. Yet again. Yes, sir. And said, Paraventure, there shall be 40 found there. Okay, 40. 40. And, yes. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. Mm. And he said unto him, Oh, let not the Lord be angry. Don't be angry. And I will speak. Paraventure, there shall 30 be found there. Why didn't he say 35? There is nothing about that number, brother. But there is something about 40. Of course, you know it's a generation. There's something about 40. Amen. Amen. Then he went, what about 30? And he said, I will not do it. No. If I find 30 there. Mm. And he said, behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. But eventually there shall be 20 found there. He didn't talk about 25. He went from 30 to 20. He dropped it to 20. And he said, I will not destroy. Because 20 is 210. Mm. I hope you know. Amen. Okay. It for 20's sake. I will not destroy it for 20's sake. And he said, oh, let not the Lord be angry. Let not the Lord be angry. I will speak yet but this once. I will speak yet but this once. But eventually 10 shall be found there. Why did Abraham not say 5? If you want to speak once, if you want to speak this one time, you should say five. But no, Abraham knew where God pegged it. He knew that the subject was what? Judgment. Because judgment is a blessing to you, it's cost to another. Anytime God is coming to bless, he's also coming to curse. That is true, my brother. On that day that he came to Sodom, was he not blessing Abraham that same day? Amen. Abraham, your service have ended. We are going to part two. Why are you following me? Then Abraham said, Paraventure, you find how many? Ten. Why? Amen. Amen. Even right after that, if there were no ten men, they cannot pray in the synagogue. Did God wait? Read what happened. Paraventure, ten shall be found. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten I sake. I will not destroy it for ten sake. And the Lord went his way. And the Lord left. As soon as he had left, communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. Okay. I have three, four, five minutes. Amen. Amen. Abraham, when he said, Paraventure 20, that was his position. 
He was the 20th man from Adam. So when he said 10, Abraham must reflect back to what happened in Noah. And do you know that the days of Noah was always counted with the days of Lot? Am I talking to somebody? How many persons did God save in Sodom? One. You say, oh, three, two, no. How many persons did God save in the flood? One. You say eight, you are talking in, you are, you are, you are counting heads. D. D only have I found worthy. So from Adam to Noah, God took tight in the tent, Noah, to cross into the new world. The wall of Adam ended. That's why you can never hear the Bible say that we are sons of Adam. The sons of Noah were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Of this uh, is the whole world overspread. I read something with Brother Joseph Asukwo during our radio broadcast in Ruth chapter 4. Shall we get there? In root. Chapter 4. When Boaz was ordering the redemption of Naomi Hallelujah Amen Verse 1 and 2 Ruth chapter, chapter 4. 4 verse 1 and 2 Yes sir Then went Boaz up to the gate mm -hmm. and sat down there Yes and behold the king's man of whom Boaz speak came by mm. unto whom he said Ho oh, such a one Turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. Yes. And he took ten men of the elders of the city. He took how many men? Ten men. Ten men. Of the elders of the city. Yes. And said, sit ye down here. Sit ye down here. And they sat down. Oh, yes. And he said unto the king's man, Naomi, that is, that, that is come again out of the country of Moab, sellet a parcel of land which was our brother Elimelech's. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. Yes. If thou will redeem it, redeem it. But if thou will not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it beside thee. And I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Stop. Then, Stop. The man said, I will redeem it. It was the closest kind. But they told him, if you redeem it, you will take root to a wife so they can raise sons for Elimelech. The man said, no. I don't want confusion in my territory. Amen. Amen. All other that came before me were thieves and robbers. I am the true shepherd. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But do you notice something, brothers? He took ten weaknesses. Did you see the pattern? Ten. It's a judgment. Redemption is a judgment. Now, sisters, I want to ask you a question. Let's be sincere with ourselves.
When a person, there is nothing tying you to the Lord in the area of your finances. Nothing. Praise the Lord. Amen. There is nothing tying you to the Lord in the area of your finances. You go in and out at will. You say, oh, God loves a cheerful giver. What is cheerful about your giving? God is a God of order. What is cheerful about your giving? You think to be a cheerful giver is a man who smiles while giving? Is that what you call a cheerful giver? Somebody saying, oh, not giving grudgingly. <laughs> and Paul said, so bountifully. He has, he's advising this, those who are so sparingly to so bountifully. And he says, not grudgingly. It's by revelation, brother. Whatever is not for faith is sin. And faith is not conditioned. Faith is not conditioned to your mood. How you feel. Faith is not feeling. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is the expression of the supernatural. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And God wants you to be able to stand your feet. That when a thing concerns God, there is, should be no fear between you and God. You should not be afraid to, to get yourself involved. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to be making some 10 minutes or 10 to 15 minutes. I don't want it to be up to 15 minutes. 10 minutes morning voice messages on this subject to re-echo it in our heart, in our soul until it's done. The Lord laid in my heart this, this afternoon or in the morning while I was studying because the devil, he traps you by taking away the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God's power. He traps you with that. Amen. Amen. We have to liberate ourselves Amen. from every time, every dawn, everything that ties us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. And he shall lift you up. Amen. It is God that does the lifting. Amen. But we must humble ourselves. To humble is to fall down before the Lord. Is to go down before the Lord. May the Lord bless us this evening. Amen. Is there any question? I'd like to take one or two questions. Is there any question? Any question? Please be free to ask before we go on that issue of giving. Sir, the question of Sunday. About, uh, what was the question of Sunday? It was asked by the woman, and we asked her to give us her number, she refuses. So how do we reach her? We will answer for ourselves. I will answer that and send. Any other question for now? You know, while teaching on this, Father, have mercy upon us. Amen. Somebody was sharing something with me today. Please look up and I want us to pray. God is a God of mercy. Amen. There was a program
that was to be done overseas. A job training program. And miraculously, this brother applied for this program after the training online for six weeks, one month, two weeks. They took them overseas and gave them jobs. Please listen. They started this job. They were a team of about 20, over 20 persons. My brothers, one person, when you belong to a group, if you are not careful, the failure of one person can rubbish you. What do you call it? Team. Isn't that team you call it? If one person scores, everybody wins. If the goalkeeper of the other side misses, everybody loses. So what happened, brother? They just said that there was a mistake somewhere. And they're going to return all these people back to their individual countries. My brother, you are not everybody. A child of God should be conscious that this world, even if you read all night and wrote the exams and you pass, give God the glory that you were not blind before the exams. should boast for nothing. What do you mean? They are going to return everybody. There could be a seed of God there who did not lift up his hand before the most high God. Do you know when Abraham gave the tithe to Melchizedek, he did not take anything. He went home empty. That one, the, if I will call it, the world will say it is foolish faith. But until you have that kind of foolish faith, not that, listen to me, not that he gave God everything. He took the tithe of what they got and gave to the Lord. And when they say, okay, take everything and go back, he said, no, I have lifted up my hands before the Lord. So that you will not think that you make me rich. The one that I have given to, he will meet me in front. I see people who say, oh, a pastor is doing his work. See the way he's cutting himself. He's doing his work. No. Some, some of the things I'm doing is not my work. I'm applying faith. And you have the right to apply the same faith. You can't tell preachers, ministers are coming to minister. You are the one who tell them, okay, oh, we have a situation, come to minister. And you want them to pay their tickets. What if they don't have what if they are not ready? So that's where faith comes in. We raise a standard. We stand our ground and say, Lord, you are a great provider. And God is going to save you from, from what? From destruction. This morning, something nearly happened. I just got a, a message from Kenya. A pastor said to me, oh, brother, nice. I've been trying to send money since yesterday to, an, to somebody in Nigeria. But I, 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 I missed up. Please help me send the money. This is the account. And I'll call you later. I'm busy. 
Please, urgently, I'll call you later. And the Holy Ghost told me, lie. Just said lie. So I replied. I said, yes, I'm also in a hurry. But I will wait. Send me the number. I didn't tell him, call me. Because I, I have already, the Lord has already told me it's a lie. I said, send me the number of the person whose account. He sent me one Matthew, Okpeyemi's number. I said, okay, then send me his Matthew Okpeyemi's phone number. He said, no, he will call you. Don't worry, just send the money. I said, okay. I waited. I tried to call the original line of that person. It's not going. Then, in the evening, I now saw a message. They have hacked my line. People are asking for money through me. I just laugh. I said, the Holy Ghost have already told me. No, that my, my time can never be lost like that. When all that we are thinking is how to print these books and get it to people, is how to make sure that the, 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 the missionaries are in the field. Brother, please, brother, put up our testimony up there. See what the Lord has done in Bang. As we close, before we pray, just put it up. Put up the, this, the, the collapsed building and then what the Lord has done for us. The Lord has done great things. Do you know that the two ministers that went to build that church were poisoned? And the people confessed. Brother Edison was rushed to Gembu for seven days. He did not get himself. What a fate! They refused to tell me. I said, Brother, why didn't you tell me? He said, The instruction you gave us was that we should not live there without roofing the church. Now, brother, that is what I call a faithful soldier. Paul told me, commit these things to faithful men who shall be able to teach others. See what we lost. See what we lost. Now, when you lose something, don't think that God is going to give you something near it. He's going to give you better. Yes, come, come, come now. Listen. See what God has given to us. Can you expand it, brother? Expand it a little. Expand it to the center. Then take it to the center. Just put it in the center and expand it. Yes, expand it more. It's okay. See what the Lord has done. We bought cement here. 14,000 naira per bag. 14,000 naira per bag. The people that we bought wood from, every day we go to take the wood, they increase the money just to frustrate us. We will take 100 bricks, 100 bricks to move it from orphanage. It's not up to orphanage, from transformer to this place. Brother, we are paying 37,000 naira per trip. Wickedness. They did everything to make sure that we will not build. But that's what God has done for us. You know, brother Austin was telling me, he said, brother, nice. I respect your faith. I said, I respect yours too. Yes, I respect his faith too. Show us, brother Austin. Not the one that was wearing suit in Benin. Where, the one in his pictures there. Go up there. That pops. Go up first. Let's say, pastor, let's say. That's the papa. That's the man who roofed the church at his age.
No worker wants to work for us. They talk to themselves. Then when we will go to buy food, they poison the food. And you don't want to have Holy Ghost. The world will not love you because they didn't love your master. They will not hail you. They didn't hail your master. The greatest hail they gave to Jesus was crucify him. Brother Austin, let's see Brother Austin. Look at him. That's the pastor of Bini Church. A worker man. A lazy man will not do this. He will tell you stories. He will give you complaint. Money finish. He went to the place. He said, give me this materials my pastor will pay he didn't ask me when i asked him how much he said 1.3 million i said where do i get it where do i get 1.3 million and he said before three o'clock where do i get it he said pastor i told them you will pay and we must keep our words that's the spirit this morning as he got to Jalingo this morning, he has been traveling for two days now. They just got to halfway. See where we are going for administration. He said to her, I said, how much are you owing? He said, sir, I owe nobody one dime. I owe nobody. Please, show his other photograph where he's standing at home. That's it. Right here, right here. That's Pastor Austin. That's when he's normal. Amen. Look at Pastor Lembang. Let's see. Increase. Take Pastor Lembang. Look at him. 69 years old. Amen. Look at him. Stay strong for the Lord. You have to walk. Every man rise up. Let every woman rise up and walk. Do something for the Lord. Let the Lord remember you for something. Let the Lord remember you for something. This is where our money is going to. This is where uh, that's what tells you every Sunday. Uh, mission offering. That's the mission offering. That's what it has done. That's what it has done. you ever come to my house and see the way I eat come to my house and see the way I live see the way I eat the Lord is faithful amen it is good God bless you elder Let's rise up. See what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. See what the Lord has done. Can you see? Mosiah, come and pray. Remember those that are traveling, they are still on the way, coming from the north. And pray for that, that building, this human being that will be there, and for the church, for the message. God bless you. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our most precious King of glory will give you praise. We celebrate your name because you are the Lord 
than never grow old. And when you speak, you always keep your word. We thank you for these wonderful testimonies. We thank you for all that you have done. We say be thou exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Lord and our God, we are very grateful. We cannot thank you enough. We are much more grateful that you have found precious treasures in ordinary dust just like us. That you are using even your master servant here, the ministers, Brother Lemban, Brother Austin, all the ministers over there for this great work, Lord, we say be thou exalted. We thank you for the success of the building. We thank you for the strength that you gave. We thank you for the victory that you won for your own. We say be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Our precious King of glory, I lift before you all the brothers, Lord God Almighty, who are on their way from the north, in the name of Jesus, you the Lord that took them there, you are more than able to bring them back to their destination safely. We trust you, Lord. We believe your word. And we will hear from them that they have gotten back home hale and hearty in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for strength for our dear brother, Brother Lemban. We pray, Lord, that he will not grow weary in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray for all the brothers, all the sisters that are committed to this mission work. Lord, we ask for your blessings upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Lord. Thank you, King of glory. Blessed be thy holy name. For in Jesus' most precious name we have prayed.